Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Recently, I have completed a series on uh, Fourier. Uh, I think it consists of about 17 different videos. Uh, so I'm basically starting a new series, uh, and we're trying to develop uh, a series on transmission line model, and then I'm going to continue, and then we're going to do voltage coefficient derivation, and then we're going to look at Smith charting and things like that. So basically sort of like a microwave tutorial that we're about to start, that I'm starting. So the first lecture is going to be on introduction to transmission line. Before we even do that, let's try to understand how does that model looks like. So let's say I have a piece of wire like this. I have a positive side and a negative side. This is a parallel piece of wire. And I'm going to break this wire down into smaller chunks. Let's say this wire into three smaller chunks. All right. So one chunk, two chunk, three chunks. So let's call that chunk one. two and three this is chunk one chunk two and chunk three so this entire piece of wire has broken down into three different chunks and we are actually calling it differential sections so these are smaller pieces of that wire so th we have a very long less than 10 meter of wire and we're breaking it down into three smaller chunks of 3.33 meters this is denoted each of these chunk is denoted with delta z Delta D, delta Z is just to show we're looking at it, we're looking at this transmission line in terms of length. All right. We can also visualize the line in terms of uh, time. We can also, our horizontal axis is with respect to time and with respect to length. Once I have my horizontal axis, what I mean to say is this. If my horizontal axis is with respect to time, then this becomes period. And when it, when it is in terms of Z, then it becomes actually uh, with, in terms of wavelength. So sometimes in your book, and most of the time in your books, this thing is written as Z comma T, sometime X comma T. T is to donate, denote that my horizontal axis is with respect to time, and X or Z is denoting with respect to length. So we are, since we are looking at these transmission lines with respect to length, we're going to use delta Z. This is the mom, most common nomenclature that we find in literature. All right. Now it turns out is this, that any piece of wire is actually consists of a very complex circuit, even though a smaller chunk of that wire is very complex circuit. And that complex circuit is actually consists of R, L, G, and C. All right. So, so we had a big piece of wire, let's just call it 10 meters. We've broken this uh, piece of wire into three chunks of 3.33 meters. And each of this chunk of piece of wire actually has a behavior that looks like an RLGC. It's a complex circuit which consists of resistance, capacitances, and inductance. That's why if you were to look at it, so I've broken this down into three different chunks and each having a length of delta Z. In transmission line theory, what do we do? We take a small chunk of that piece of wire, we analyze it, and we come up with something called impedances and, and, and other things like that. And how do we come up with an impedance? Based on just a smaller piece of that wire. Now, if you were to look at this smaller piece of wire, this thing has a behavior of RLGC, which means R is your resistance. And when I'm denoting it with a bar on top of it, which means I'm looking at it I'm looking at it with respect to this small chunk. I'm not looking at an entire piece of wire. I'm looking at it having a bar on, on, on um, uh, uh, a prime signal on top of RLGC. That means I'm looking at a smaller portion of that wire. All right. So this thing has a length. So ohms per meter. That's why I have R's of prime. L of prime is Henry per meter. G is Siemens per meter, which is actually a unit for conductance, and C is capacitance. Okay, so now uh, eventually what we're going to do, we're going to drive transmission line equation uh, based on these values because we're going to analyze a smaller piece of wire, and then we're based on that, we're going to calculate the impedance of this wire. Now, you might be asking, where does this RLGC inside of that wire is coming up, coming from? It's actually, this is, this is the way your piece of wire is behaving. They're actually making a complex circuit. They are not physically present. These components are not physically present in that piece of wire. But they are behaving 
like this. And, and just to make things even clear, when you go and buy these cables, when you go and buy especially coaxial cable and cables which are operating at a higher frequency, you will come to know that they will have inductances and they will have capacitances. And, and these capacitances and inductances, they are given in terms of Henry per meter or Farad per meter. Um, I, I'll, show you the, I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so I was just discussing that uh, where does actually these resistance, inductance, capacitance are coming from? They are not actually there physically present in that piece of wire but the behavior is actually based on this so let's look at a data sheet here's here i have a data sheet of a rg58 which is a 50 ohm transmission line and if you were to look at it closely this is what the terms that you should be interested in seeing right so the first term is so the first term is your impedance so this thing has an impedance of 53 ohms now if you were to go go in, at the bottom don't care about the rest of the I mean the 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 stuff that is there in the data sheet okay so let's look at this we have 26.84 so this is 26.4 26.4 of capacitance and this is picofarad per feet all right per feet picofarad per feet and then we have nominal inductance which is 0 0.088 micro henry per feet so when it's saying per feet we're now we're, we're observing a piece of let's say the line is 10 feet long per feet per feet it will have 26.5 26.4 picofarad of capacitance and 0 0.088 micro henry of inductance so this is this is that's why when we model our system we model our system our transmission line based on rlgc where g is just conductance and conductance means that conductance is actually one over r all right so if i don't have any resistance which means i have high conductance let's say infinity so one over, if I have no resistance, this is 1 over 0. 1 over 0 would give me infinity. And infinity basically telling me with respect to conductance is that my electrons can roam around however they want in my piece of wire. So that's why these things are not physically there. So my concluding remarks regarding transmission line model is they are not physically there in our piece of wire, but they are behavior like this. And these are, you can call them parasitic capacitances and parasitic inductances. So these will come with respect to the length of that line and how big that line is. And impedance is just the impedance or the resistance. And capacitance is actually not a physical quantity. It's something that we describe with respect to 1 over R. When I have zero resistance, which means I have induct infinite number of uh, infinite capacitance and which we actually want to achieve. And that's how superconductors work. The reason superconductor works is because they have zero resistances which make them highly conductive which makes them superconductor and you can make them by actually cooling down a conductor. So these were my concluding remarks regarding uh, transmission line model and based on this we're going to develop our, we're going to drive the transmission line equation both in voltages and both in a frequency domain. So I hope you like this small video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.